So Tony Bellew scores a fifth round TKO over Julio Cesar De Santos. Now, when Tony Bellew turned professional, I was very surprised that he turned professional at light heavyweight because I was someone who had seen a lot of Tony Bellew's amateur fights. I'd actually followed him in the amateurs and he was fighting at heavyweight at the time, which is around 200 pounds in the amateurs. And he was fighting big guys and knocking big guys out, certainly in the UK. So when he turned pro to come down 25 pounds from the weight he'd been at for a long time, doing well against big guys, knocking them out, to fight a light heavyweight in the pro game, especially since Bellew turned pro pretty late. He was in his, I think, late 20s by the time he turned pro, certainly mid to late 20s. And at that age, losing 25 pounds of weight when you're used to fighting at a certain weight, I wondered whether that was a wise move. I mean, I, I, I didn't know that it would be a bad move, but I was pretty, you know, confused by that. I was pretty intrigued as to why they were making that move. You know, it's a, it's a lot of weight to lose, especially at that age. And it's not like he was, you know, blubbery as an amateur. Yeah, he was a little bit on the soft side, but people have different body types. Not everyone can be ripped. Okay, certain people just don't have that type of um, muscularity about them to be able to be ripped. All right, if you look at someone like Tito Trinidad, for example, he was a guy who he never looked ripped in his fights. He was that lanky and lean, but he never looked ripped and muscular ever. And when he moved up to middleweight, he looked a bit soft but he did have some good wins at middleweight so yeah uh, I was a little intrigued and maybe a bit skeptical about how effective Tony Bellew would be at light heavyweight since it's a lot of weight to lose and he had whatever career he had at light heavyweight and the one thing that was missing from Tony Bellew in his light heavyweight career was that real decisive punching power that he seemed to have in the amateurs at heavyweight and since he's moved up to cruiserweight, as we see in his last two fights, he's had some spectacular knockout wins. A 12th round knockout in his previous fight. And then obviously he knocked out the Santos tonight with a beautiful left hook in the fifth. So I think going back up to his natural weight, which is cruiserweight, the weight where he's comfortable at, the weight where he feels strong at, has definitely improved his power. He's a little slower now. He still makes most of the technical errors that he used to make. He's never going to be fast at any weight that he's at, particularly fast. Tony Bellew is who he is, but he's been given power now and the power to actually knock out cruiserweights. This guy, DeSantos, okay, I'm not saying he was the greatest fighter in the world, but he was certainly in shape. He's a natural cruiserweight, a big puncher himself, never been stopped. And Tony Bellew managed to knock him out with a left hook beautiful left hook yes the Santos did land some of his own shots he rocked Bellew on a couple of occasions but the guys at least on, on paper a prolific puncher so getting rocked by a prolific puncher isn't really that big of a deal to be honest with you even Floyd Mayweather got rocked by Shane Mosley again I'm not saying the Santos is any Shane Mosley in terms of skill level but when a punch lands, it lands. It don't really matter who's throwing the punch. If it's a hard punch, it's a hard punch. An amateur can throw a hard punch. A guy on the street, believe it or not, can throw a hard punch. You know, certain guys on the street. Anyway, so I thought it was a, a decent performance by Bellew. He's never going to be an incredible fighter. You know, I think Dave Caldwell can improve him to a certain extent. But... He, he's never going to be elite level. He is what he is. But he's certainly capable of getting back in there and duking it out with Nathan Cleverly again. There's still a lot of bad blood there. There's still a lot of needle there. And there's definitely going to be a demand for the fight because, you know, because of that bad blood. And they were going at it at ringside, shouting at each other and whatnot. And that is going to be good for publicising the rematch and the rematch is set to take place I believe later on this year maybe October November around that time 
Who do you think is going to win the rematch? Uh, the panel on Sky Sports was split. Uh, Paul Smith and Carl Froch believe that Tony Bellew with his extra power at cruiserweight is going to knock Nathan Cleverly out. Nathan Cleverly as well fought on the same bill tonight. He also won by stoppage, but he was fighting a much lesser opponent than the guy Tony Bellew fought. That has to be said. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Carl Froch and uh, Paul Smith feel that Bellew is going to knock Cleverly out in the rematch. But Glenn McCrory feels that Cleverly will beat Bellew again. Now, I know for a fact, I mean, it's not really a secret, that Carl Froch is pretty good friends with Tony Bellew. So he's biased. And Paul Smith is also pretty good friends with Tony Bellew. And he's also from the same city, Liverpool. So he's biased. So I'm not sure if they're being 100% objective or not. I'm not saying they they're incapable of it, but I'm just I'm not sure whether they're really being objective, or whether they're thinking with their heads or their hearts when they say that they think Bellew's going to knock cleverly out in a rematch. And Glenn McCrory, as far as I know, doesn't have any affiliation with Nathan Cleverly, so I don't know. I think it's an intriguing rematch. I I don't know, man. Um, I think I see it being similar to the first fight. To be honest with you, yes, I do think Bellew's power has improved, but you still got to be able to land that power. You know, you got to be able to land it. I think he's going to have to land it more than once to get Nathan Cleverly out there. And I don't think that's going to be an easy task. I don't think it's just going to be a one punch situation and then Cleverly gets, I mean, it, maybe it will. I don't know. It could be wrong, but I'd be surprised. I think you'll probably have to land quite a few shots to, to get Cleverly out of there. And I don't know, man. I see it be a, I see it as an intriguing fight, but let me know what you feel. Drop your comments in the comment section below. This is Hatman. I'm out.